Первое правило. Выступление должно быть не более 10 минут. Второе правило. Только свои собственные исследования. Третье правило. Доклады должны быть очень просты. Hi. I'm here to explain how the universe will end according to the laws of physics. And to make this a little bit more understandable, I'm going to illustrate this as if the universe is a small vehicle, a lot of. There are a couple of takes on the end of the universe in physics. One of them from Steven Weinberg, a Nobel laureate who did a lot of work on the early universe, is that the more we understand about the universe and the more it seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. Um, Considering how much he knew, it must have been very depressing for him. Uh, another take is by Alan Guth, one of the creators of inflation, which we'll get to in a moment. And for him, the universe is like the ultimate free lunch. I find this a lot more positive because there's nothing negative about free lunch. Before we can think about the future of the universe, we need to know how it evolved and what its history was. So. You can think of the acceleration of the car down the hill as representing the expansion of the universe. So when the car is accelerating a whole lot, the universe is expanding very quickly. In the very early universe, we had something called inflation, which was this rapid exponential expansion of space. So the universe would double in size repeatedly over and over, growing from smaller than a proton to larger than the radius of the observable universe in under a second. And then this ended. Um, we know it had to occur to be for our models of the universe to make sense, but we also know it's not happening anymore, otherwise we wouldn't be here if we were just expanding exponentially. And after inflation, you have this period of regular expansion of the universe, characterized by the uh, development of stars and the evolution of galaxies and us. Um, but starting about five billion years ago, we know that this expansion rate has started to accelerate again. So you have a little dip, the car is going downhill. And we think this is due to something called dark energy, which we don't understand very well. But we do know that the universe is accelerating um, because we can measure this. So what do these three phases of the universe tell us about how it will end? It's, it's maybe a little bit like an episode of Game of Thrones, but we don't know which one yet. Um, so if we think about the expansion phase, if this just continues forever, then the universe will expand and cool to a cold equilibrium of elementary particles and dark energy. You can think of the universe kind of like a ball of gas. And you take this ball of gas and you expand it without adding any heat or energy to it. And as it gets bigger, the temperature drops. And it gets really cold. After about... Um, 1,000 times the current age of our universe, over on the left here, the universe will run out of gas for star formation, and all stars will eventually run out of fuel and die. And what will be left is these uh, stable relics, like black holes, neutron stars, iron, white dwarfs. And these will last for a really long time, but we know that eventually they too must also decay. There's processes like proton decay and, and other things that we know from nuclear physics should happen, but um, they take a really, really long time. And even black holes actually will also evaporate due to a process called Hawking radiation. Um, so eventually, we'll just have this, we'll have elementary particles and some dark energy, and that's really about it, and it will be extremely cold. There are some ways out of this. For instance, we know we have some dark energy, but if we actually have a lot of dark energy, and experimentally, it's hard to really know exactly how much we have. So this is a, a still current possibility. So if we have too much dark energy, I guess you can see, then we don't have heat death. We have what's called a big rip, because the universe will expand faster and faster, and then it will actually tear itself apart in only 20 or 30 billion years which is a long time, but much quicker than heat death. So what is dark energy, this, this stuff pushing the universe apart? It's kind of like a primordial energy of the vacuum of space. It's related to the underlying structure of space, but really we need new theories that will explain what it is and then be consistent with our current theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics, because the answer isn't really in those theories. Um, but we do know that it, it corresponds to about 70% of the energy density of our universe. Ordinary matter is only about 4%, and 
dark energy on long length scales is really where most of it is. But we don't understand it. It's kind of like, well, here it's the cookie dough of the universe. So we have expansion, we have a big rip, but so inflation also raises some questions. Inflation was this early period of very rapid expansion that we know occurred and we know it ended, but we don't know why. In inflation, the energy of matter, the energy of dark energy, and the energy of the gravitational field are precisely balanced so that the energy of the entire universe is actually zero, which is really a very shocking thing. I mean, the energy of this thing for switching slides or the energy of Earth or the energy of this room is a really large positive value. But because of gravitational fields on galactic scales and so forth, the energy of the universe is actually exactly zero. Um, and because of this, because the universe has zero energy overall, it can actually arise as a, a fluctuation of energy out of the vacuum. And uh, like, because it has zero energy, this fluctuation can persist forever, um, which yeah, is about as weird as you can get, I think. When um, this idea has really been floating around for a long time, it's originally from the 1850s. Um, Kelvin, the guy who uh, the absolute value of temperature that scale is from, was the first one to think of it. And um, when this idea was explained to Einstein in the 1940s by uh, George Gamow, who I think is from Moscow, um, it was so shocking that um, they were going for a walk and Einstein just stopped in mid-step, the story is. And this was a problem because they were in the middle of crossing a street and cars were coming and so forth. Well, actually, thing, this is incredibly weird, but it, we can almost get weirder. And um, so observationally, we know that inflation happened, but theoretically, it's hard to make good models where inflation ends in a natural way. And so one of the ideas for getting around this is maybe inflation doesn't actually ever end. And it, so inflation continues forever, but we know that in our local bubble of the universe, inflation has ended. So it, it brings up this idea that maybe we're in a local bubble where inflation no longer happens, but we're in a larger multiverse, you know, up here on the left, where inflation in these white spaces can still be occurring, but you have a large number of bubble universes that are disconnected from each other, which may be locally stable. Like, okay, so on the left, I've drawn a, an infinite mountain, kind of, of inflation. You have the car going down a hill. And if the car gets to an area that's locally stable, then in these areas, inflation can end. This is how we perceive our universe to be. But it doesn't mean that inflation will not start again or that inflation can't be going on somewhere else. It's kind of like if we're in one of these locally stable areas and someone hits the gas, then the car will start going down the mountain again and inflation will restart. Or maybe another one of these universes depicted as a car will crash into us, changing the properties of our universe and their own. So we might have problems in the future. But for now, I think we're at least a little bit OK. So in synopsis, our first scenario is that if the universe just expands forever, it will eventually cool. And we'll end up with an equilibrium of elementary particles and dark energy at nearly absolute zero. And this is all that will happen forever until the end of time. Another take from inflation, which is different but actually also consistent with the above scenario, is that because the universe has zero energy overall, because you have this precise balance between matter and dark energy and gravity, the universe can arise as a fluctuation of energy from the vacuum. And then this fluctuation will just last forever. And you might get something like heat death that occurs once your fluctuation has come into being. Or if the properties of dark energy change so that this balance is then broken in the future, it would imply that our universe would have to decay or, or something unpleasant. And um, the third scenario is if inflation ends in our local bubble universe but continues everywhere else. So we have individual bubble universes in a much larger multiverse where inflation continues eternally, then our bubble universe might be stable and it, 
it might be fortunate enough to undergo heat decay, or we might collide with another bubble universe, or inflation may restart again. And these are really bizarre scenarios in a sense, but they're also the most straightforward extrapolations from experiment and theory that we currently have. But uh, they're inherently paradoxical, um, and they seem like they're not really the end of the story. So what can we do? We can, we can continue to be creative. We can try and think of something different. We can keep exploring, and maybe we'll figure something out. And we can hopefully not panic, um, and maybe fund physics. <laughs> um.